welcome, or welcome back to BrickCats. As always, if you drop a like or a subscribe, I greatly appreciate it. Your support means more great mock reviews in the future. Today I'm going to feature the N1 Battle Droid, designed by Tyler Kleitz and available, available from Build Better Bricks. The Battle Droids, of course, made their debu debut in the Phantom Menace as the mainstay of the Trade Federation Army, and subsequently provided cannon fodder throughout the Clone Wars. In my reviews, I offer my opinions on aesthetics, parts issues you might want to look out for, the build experience, the model's integrity, and I offer a conclusion. If you're watching this, I assume you've bought the instructions, you're interested in buying them, and I assume a basic level knowledge of Brickling's ordering system. There's only one variation specified in the parts list and instructions, but it's pretty easy to customize if you wanted to. Lastly, my disclaimer on this and all my mock reviews is that I only use genuine LEGO bricks. I always purchase the instructions for myself for my own personal enjoyment and in the hopes that my advice will make your experience more enjoyable and or less expensive. LEGO's buildable figures are simply not that great in my opinion. They've got odd proportions and they make use of pieces that don't really play well with standard LEGO system pieces. I can't say I was disappointed to see them discontinued. This battle droid looks what I think the buildable figure should have been. It uses system and technic parts. LEGO put out a technic version of the battle droid in 2000, and I have to say this actually looks pretty good too. Um, of course it's got some weird things going on with the head being technic pieces, but um, it's not quite my preference. I really like the brick built look here. Tyler Kleitz's model is all brick build, with of course some small technical exceptions, and uses mostly mixel joints and hinge pieces for the movement. The tan color scheme is only interrupted by a few light bluish gray and dark bluish gray pieces that are color locked, which means that LEGO does not make a alternate color, or at least the color uh, that we want, and some dark tan pieces provide for some visual interest. Moving kind of top to bottom here, the head shape looks great with the slope pieces of various sizes and the two small antenna protruding from the back. Out of necessity, the eyes with the Technic bricks with holes are on the side instead of uh, on top where they, I guess, should be. But I think that's a pretty good compromise because I think it would be really difficult to put the eyes here. The battle droid has a little backpack with an antenna on it. And on the chest, my favorite little detail is this uh, plate with a stud in the center. It's for the restraining bolt. The shoulder and the wrist joints are mixels, so they can move pretty well. While the elbow joint is just a simple hinge plate. The blaster is mostly Technic pieces. And it can be placed on either hand because it uses this Technic pin to secure it. So I thought that was a pretty clever way to make the droid ambidextrous. I don't know why a droid would favor a right or a left hand, other than programming, I guess. And it's got two fingers with these modified plates with clips that have a little bit of mobility, uh, just enough to make it pose well. The... oops. We'll get to that later. The torso rotates 360 degrees on a Technic pin. And this is pretty loose. The hips and the ankles are mixel joints. And again, we've got all of those fingered hinges. Well, not again, but we have a fingered hinge at the knee. A little bit limited movement to the back there, but not too bad. And again, one of my favorite details, I like how there's some definition to the, the droid equivalent of a calf muscle here. The feet have a 2x5 anti-stud area. Uh, if you wanted to put this on a base plate or um, a plate of some kind, Ignore this dark bluish gray plate here. I just didn't have a tan one at the time, so I substituted them. But overall, I think the droid looks really good. Especially when the arms are on. 
Oh, I forgot to mention the neck pixel joint has a fair bit of movement too, and this is just a clip and a plate. The Battle Droid uses 77 elements and 309 parts, and if you buy the instructions, you get an I.O. file with the parts list. One amazing thing about this model is that basically none of these parts are very uncommon, and therefore this is very cost effective. Since most of the pieces do show up on the exterior in the final build, you're going to want to stick fairly close to the specified colors, which as you can see is mostly tan. But obviously dark tan is a pretty good substitute for light tan, and light bluish gray used in moderation would also fit. It would kind of be like a uh, battle damage or a scratched paint or something. Even though most of the parts show up on the exterior, there are a few, like actually only a very few, that are hidden. It would have been nice if those were indicated in the parts list with an off color or a note or something. But uh, overall, like I said, this build is so cheap that it's really not that big of a difference. So there actually aren't any specific substitutions I recommend for cost or appearance purposes in this one. This is a quick build and it's probably going to only take you a, a leisurely 20 or 30 minutes. The instructions are really good and this is suitable for basically any level of build experience. There's, you can see there's nothing complicated here. There's uh, no highlighting to indicate which parts are added in each step, but again, like I said, it's not that big of a deal because this model is pretty small and it's just not necessary. Overall, this model is pretty solid. Um, of course, there are a few weak points, as you've already seen. Uh, the arms tend to come off if you wiggle them too much. The finger connections are just modified plates, so those are pretty easy to pop off. The mixel joints are very secure. Um, if you know mixels, you know, they're not gone anywhere. You know, like with the arms, the most likely scenario is that the studs that it, or in this case the toe ball um, Technic connector comes off. This neck joint is a clip, so it's easy to pop off there. But this one is not such a big deal because I don't find myself wanting to move the neck more than up or down very often. Uh, and then it's only in the very rare angles when you can't kind of rotate the Mixel joint from side to side because it's stuck in the, the little indent there. But overall the head is pretty pretty mobile and pretty secure. I only have two kind of minor complaints, uh, one of which I don't think is solvable using system parts. Well, maybe it is, but um, first the Technic pin at the waist it spins really freely. There's basically no friction aside from the very little um, on the little ridge in the center here. So uh, this causes problems when you're trying to pose this guy. The weight can shift the entire model and then it just tends to fall over. This is actually pretty difficult to get right. And the, the balance issue is caused by, um, well, I mean, it's stands on two feet anyway, so it's not it's inherently unstable. Uh, but these elbow joints are also really loose, and so it's really tough to get these in a position where they stay. And like I said, it's kind of a cascading effect. Once you have the elbow joint fall or slip, if you will, this might cause rotation in the hips, and then the whole thing falls over. So it's definitely not the most stable model. I think it'd be useful if there was a little stand that he could like rest on or maybe support him through these little guys here or something uh, or even on the back here but you know if you can get it to stand up it looks pretty cool I just have trouble imagining how you're going to put this on a shelf or something without any support the one thing I think that maybe the designer could consider is using one of those big um, Technic ball joint pieces here. Uh, this would give it a lot of strength in the hips uh, and it would make it 
It would actually give it a, a bigger range of motion. I'd have to check and see if that's actually canon accurate. I'm not sure if they can bend at the waist, but um, that would at least strengthen this connection a lot and make it so you could just you know rotate this, be confident that it would stay, and then uh, come over here to adjust the arms. Yeah, you might be able to use facial joints here in the arms too, but um, it kind of throws off the color scheme a lot because these pieces are color locked, so you'd have light gray, light bluish gray all through the center of the arm, which isn't ideal. So overall, I was not displeased with this model by any means. It's definitely got some charm, and personally I think it looks great. It's by far the best battle droid model I've seen. Um, and that definitely includes the 2000 LEGO Technic model. It's also not very expensive. Um, with a you know, 0 to 100% kind of cradle to grave if you start from zero. The build cost on Bricklink was about $28 before shipping and tax. And you know, if you've got an inventory, I assume you could cut that down uh, even further. Um, like I said, these aren't uncommon parts. You've got, you know, one by four plates, kind of curved slopes, some tiles, some more curved slopes here. You know, the only kind of odd parts you might be missing are maybe these guys or these small rounded tiles. Uh, it all just depends. But yeah, there's nothing, nothing rare, nothing complicated here. So that was great. The color issues, uh, especially color locking, like I mentioned, uh, they're unfortunate, but there's nothing they can do. It's a, that's a Lego thing. They don't meaningfully detract from the model's appearance, in my opinion. And I, like I said, I really like the fun detailing. The restraining belt's really cool. This backpack, I think, looks really good. And finally, there's lots of options for color customization, depending on preference, or if you wanted to build a different class of battle droid. Um, you could modify this pretty easily to uh, be one of those commando droids from the uh, Rishi episode in episode one. I think they show up in other places too. Or, you know, if you wanted to make a AAT driver or you know, a guard droid or whatever else, um, I think that'd be pretty easy. Thanks, as always, for taking the time to watch my review. If you've built this model and you've got something to share that I left out or have a question I didn't cover, please leave them below in the comments. Also, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, or following me on Instagram. I hope to see you back next time. Thanks again.